G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing. We specialise in guided tours throughout Victoria, but we also take groups to Alaska, Chile, bone fishing Christmas Island, and our most popular one, New Zealand. So if that's where you want to go, come in and see us at our stores in Bentley and Lumsden. So just after losing that one and composing ourselves and uh, getting all our swear words out of, it, my, out of my system anyway, we'll get back to this spot. Trout, uh, predominantly, um, like, like they live singularly and they'll feed by themselves and they'll, they'll um, try and scare off a lot of the other fish that are around them because they're going to interfere with their um, the food that's being brought to them. Once you get close to the spawning time, um, they, they accept other fish being around them for a variety of reasons. So get back to this spot. There could well be a whole school of those fish sitting there. So uh, if you can hook up one, good chance there could be a lot more around it. There we go. And that's, uh, that's good. And he's just there. <laughs> oh, thought I thought I'm... No. Same's going to happen again, I think. Thought I might have been under netting there, but he's got a bit of a hurry up. And that's in the same spot where we did hook that fish. So uh, even if you get one, particularly around spawning time, keep persisting. Because there can well be like quite a few more fish there. So I'll just... Uh, the slack water there. If I can actually get him before I have to run downstream, that will be good. Bit of a log there. We can keep him out of that. That's good. Especially don't want to fall over when the camera's going. It's got a bit of power in that current. I can drag him back. I can get his head still up. Into the net, then that's good as well. So uh, that's worked out well. Another good um, fish, he's probably, oh, I can weigh him. Was that the McLean's lie detector? Just, just on two pounds. That's a good little fish for um, the Rubicon. And again, another little brook trout. And he just loved this uh, this egg pattern. That stick out of the way. It's a little bead. And we put that uh, separate little little hook and uh, I'll suck that in and then the hook uh, hooks them up and that's always just on the outside or just on the inside of the mouth and very easy to release. Another beautiful fish, I mean you're, you're, I think you're legally allowed to keep five. Um, we can put them all back as you've seen with all our fish that we catch. But that's a, just a lovely uh, brook trout in the Rubicon River. A good couple of pound, amazing spots. We've got pink, yellows, lovely green back and essentially a white body. But sometimes you see that flash on the fly. So uh, it's good to go, hold him up and uh, it's all good. So uh, in the same spot, it's still worth another couple of casts. We've got a lovely pool further up as well. There's no rush. You've got all day, that's what fly fishing's about. And if you can get a couple of fish, this makes it a more fun day, I guess, doesn't it? So uh, we'll get back up here and have another go. Now I can see a flash, like I said before, about the white. So there are definitely some more fish there. I'm just going to drag this fly so it goes in front of them and uh, they'll snap of it. There's a variety of reasons I'll eat this. One is a, as a food source, and the other is they want their eggs to be dominant as well. So they will quite often uh, snap it out of aggression. Not so much to eat it, but to kill it. So when they lay their eggs, more chance that they're going to be successful. So sometimes you can literally just pepper the water and get that fly drifting past them until they do make that mistake and grab hold of it. That was him and missed him, but uh, it's okay. Can't cry on TV. Oh, I keep seeing that flash of white that we spoke about where the fish will just come and turn and just eat something. So uh, I'm still in there. Just need to get this right in this slot. And a lot of the times, you, you may have seen one where we're using an indicator. Um, 
and your flies are not necessarily directly underneath that indicator. They might be off to the side. So it, it just pays, particularly when you've got swirling currents, that you do need quite a few casts. And it, there'll just be that one where that, either a nymph or in this case, our egg pattern, goes right where the fish are. So a few different casts, and uh, eventually one's going to be uh, right in that right spot. Go. Oh, there he is. And uh, that's what it just pays to persist. I mean, that's I've had probably I don't know, 30, 40 casts in there, and I knew there was a fish there because I could see it. So don't get the panic and start screaming up to the, the next bit of water because it looks better, whatever. Persist with what you've got in front of you because you'd be surprised at how many fish are going to be there. This is going to be another good fish. He, he looks to be a couple of pounds. Um, and that's why you go fly fishing. Sometimes, you know, it can be really easy, fish rising. Other times you get up, there's a bit of dirt in the water. But you just, you don't give in. You try something different. Uh, in this case, I mean, egg patterns is not something we use all the time. Uh, but now's a great time to, to do it. So um, you try different things, you learn a lot, and you have a lot of fun doing it. So, uh, yeah, that's why you get out and fly fish. He's all right, he's holding in that, that good water just there, which is much better than him going down there. So uh, we'll just let him tie himself out a little bit. What you really want when you get a net of fish is to be able to control him and his head to come up. So um, I'll let him fight against the current for as long as you can. That's another great uh, brook trout. But we can, I'll just get him out and have a look. It's easily probably two, two and a half pounds, which is uh, which is good fun, good fun. In a, in a day that's not ideal, you know, so uh, you certainly have a lot of uh, enjoyment there. They've got some good munching teeth there too. And just incredible spots. You can see those up in there, some really bright reds and pinks and yellows. They're just a stunning fish, you know, different to a lot of the other trout that we're used to there. But uh, still a beautiful fish and great fun on the fly as well. So uh, again, just up current. When he's ready, he's good. And that sort of worked out pretty well. The, uh, the setup we're using too, we, we've gone for something a little bit longer than normally I'd use here. I'd normally use like, a, a, like an eight footer. This is an eight and a half. You can go a nine as well. Uh, that's a five weight because there are some, some big fish and um, yeah, you want to hang on to them and steer them around if you can. The setup we're using is something that we've um, got from, from America when we went over to Alaska last year. And it's called like a bead. And what we do is thread that in and that looks exactly like um, a trout egg. And there's various colours from uh, when they are first uh, laid, they'll be bright orange and then they'll fade whether they, they float down or die. So there's all, all different colours. And uh, just off that, generally like an inch or two, we've got like a little hook. Uh, and the whole purpose of that is that it'll suck that in uh, and then the hook will get it on the inside or the outside of the mouth. So much better for catch and release and you're not going to harm the fish. Because they take these so readily, so if you're using glow bugs and things, they can get them all the way down in their gills, you know, even into the stomach, and um, yeah, it's pretty hard to catch and release those. So it's a much better system that we've uh, we've brought back to Australia, funny enough, and uh, if you want some more info, just, just let us know, and I can certainly point you in the right direction. Uh, and then on that, we've also got a, um, like an indicator, and that, that's just like a woolen indicator that we use, and, and you can adjust the depth and things like that. So you cast that up, if this goes down, it's because there's a fish on the end of that, and that seems to work fantastic in uh, May and June in Australia. It does pay too when, when you are like drifting nymphs or egg patterns, particularly on short little pocket water like this, that you keep um, your line out of the water that's going to drag. So if I put that line in, that's going to pull uh, the whole system and, and lift the flies too high in the water column. So what we'll do, you cast it up and literally keep the fly line above the water. So all you've got in there is essentially your indicator, your flies and a little bit of your leader. You'll get a very natural drift the whole way down 
and then pick it up and certainly cast it straight back up as well. There's a few different techniques I use and you can get into like 10 foot rods and all that sort of stuff which is, I mean certainly a lot of people use it to great success, it's just not for me. Um, and, and it's a great way to get a very natural drift and pick up a lot of fish in water literally at your feet. So uh, just try a few different techniques and one of them's gonna work for you. There we go. And that one certainly did. So, uh, beautiful little fish. And, and that's what it's about, getting a nice little drift like that. Very natural. You can imagine an egg is just gonna go with the current. So if you can just let it just go with the current, that's what's certainly gonna attract these fish. Perfect, that's good. That's when an egg pattern works very well. So uh, yeah, we can stand there and literally catch them at your feet. Come on, mate. Just great little fish, and they, they are certainly different to uh, the browns and rainbows we're used to. Lovely colorations, a very mottled fish plenty of go left in him so uh, yeah this fly fishing's pretty cool fun <laughs>